Hey YouTube Bob, got something a little bit different today. This video is not going to stay up that long. I don't know if you guys have seen a YouTube channel called The Workshop. A host by the name of Matt. This guy does uh, some interesting stuff at times, some engineering explanation things around motorcycles and engines in general. And he also does quite a few piss take videos where he uh, critiques other YouTube other YouTubers' videos. I'll probably be one of those one day, the way I uh, muck around in my workshop. Anyway, uh, he's put out a request to do a video on torque wrenches because one of the guys he critiques has done a video saying that, um, anyway, you want to watch his video, but he's saying that, that this guy is saying that a torque wrench will only click if the bolt twists. And uh, Matt has put out a request saying, do a video and uh, see, see if you can prove him wrong or right, I guess, uh, is, is, what, uh, is what he's getting at. So we're gonna set something up and see what the conclusion is. Personally, I think, um, I think Matt's wrong. You're wrong, Matt, let's prove you wrong. The torque wrench will only click if the bolt moves or twists. Let's try out, let's see what happens. Right here, we've got some parts together here and uh, it's going to be pretty basic. I'm just going to cut this off. Uh, now, you might say, well, we're using some pretty heavy stuff here, but I want to make sure there's absolutely no chance that the bolt can twist and make the torque wrench click. So this will be welded to this. I'll cut a, um, I'm going to reduce this down in size to say 13 mil, 14 mil hex. Torque wrench will go on there. Then I'll have um, this welded on here like this with a test dial indicator on there. And if there's any twist in this shaft, we'll be able to see whether or not Matt's wrong or right. Because obviously if it clicks, then this has got a twist. First up, a little bit of farty parting. for 18.2, 25.4, so let's just quickly rip six mil off that. Let's not muck around with it. This is what happens when you run around trying to whip up a quick video. I completely forgot that I had to hold it in the hex uh, 5C collet holder so I could cut a nice hex on the end. So I had to put it back in the lathe and machine that down. This is why you're supposed to plan stuff out anyway. 
Let's whack that in the mill and machine the hex off the end there. Right. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about my own mental capabilities. Right, yo. 15mm socket on there. Machining part done at this stage. Should be enough. Chippity chip. Stainless steel electrodes. Woo! Love it, love it. Cut, cut, take two. And for my next trick, whatever that is, galvanized onto mild steel. OMG. Mmm, rusty damp electrode. <laughs> uh, what, do we, what do we want? Down, 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 down. Uh, what do you reckon, Matt, about. Let's go. Uh, 75. Let's take a stab in the dark. What could possibly go wrong? Whoop, whoop. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Everything is filthy. Mm -hmm. You get that in the big jobs. Come on, baby. Jeepers, where was that? Amateurish. What's going on here? Ah, my electro didn't lock in the head properly. It's so small. Ah, oh, that's terrible. One job. <laughs> Rightio, I've put way too much time and effort into this just for a piss take on Matt and the workshop. Right, here we go. So, what do we got? Stainless steel base, tightly clamped in the vise. No twisty twisty there. Two inch shaft, 50 mil. Welded to the base, no twisty twisty there. Inch and a half, 45 mil approximately. Shaft here with the translation arm, we'll call it, the flex arm, attached to a one hundredth of a mil dial indicator. Any small movement there is gonna move our gauge, right? So when we put a twisting force on here, with the torque wrench, even the small amount, smallest amount of twist on this shaft is going to move this, which is going to move the dial gauge. Now, we're going to set the torque wrench initially to, you guys aren't going to see it, that's just way too shiny. I've got it on 40 Newton meters. We've got a 15 mil socket drive on there. And uh, let's get this set up. 
and see if the torque, torque wrench is going to click before this moves or whether there's going to be some twist. I reckon, I reckon Matt's talking shit. Let's see. All right, probably bad lighting, bad camera angles, bad everything. Let's do it. Right. Torque. Let's go from here. Let's make it 40 Newtons on the knocker. Hang on, where's the 40 Newton line? All righty, there we go. Bom, bom, bom. Dramatic music, please. Um, oh yeah, now you can see the whole torque wrench there. No fancy gizmos going on here. All right, dial gauge is at zero. Let's do it. It's moving. Ah, so he's right. There has to be some flex in the bolt for the torque wrench to click. That's unbelievable. Let's give it a bit more, eh? Let's see. Let's go, ah, 100 Newton meters. Someone's gonna have to do the, the imperial conversion to foot pounds. Okay, there we go, 100 Newton meters. What were we getting about? 500s deflection on 40. Let's see how much we get at 100. Okay, a little bit of muscle required. We went out of range of the meter. Oh no. Reset the meter. We might have to get one with a bit more um. Radio. There we go, approximately zero. Yeah, yeah. Let's go again, 100 Newton meters. I think you could actually see that moving. That's going about. Unfortunately, the jump causes the meter to move, but it's about 0.2 a millimeter, isn't it? <laughs> uh, some people are nitwits. Actually, now I've had a bit of a think about it. I think Matt was right. I think there's actually like a tension rod that runs up the middle here and actually does the flexing when you pull on the old uh, torque wrench, yeah. Because otherwise, when you backed it right off, it wouldn't click when it's clearly not putting any pressure or torque on the shaft. No, 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 not common sense. See you later. Rightio, enough faffing around. Back to doing some real work.